right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Must add week one to everyone's favorite video. Presented by FanDuel Canada, official sportsbook partner of the NHL. The best place to bet on hockey this season. Absolutely no chance. Okay, six players to run through, four forwards, two defensemen. Let's get into week one must add. All right, so the first guy we're looking at is Jake Sanderson. He's quite highly rostered in a lot of leagues right now, but this is a longevity pickup if you can get him. He's 48% rostered, only plays two games this week. Uh, but in terms of defensemen on this Ottawa Senators team, you're looking at two guys right now. Jacob Chikrin kind of stole all the headlines in terms of Ottawa defensemen. He scored two goals uh, this weekend. But I think Jake Sanderson throughout the season will be a better pickup and will finish with more fantasy points. You know, he's Chikrin's 80% rostered. This guy's only 50% rostered. But they're getting equal opportunity on the power play. And he doesn't play with Shabbat, Jake, Jake Sanderson. He plays with Artem Zub, who's clearly a stay-at-home defenseman, giving Sanderson all the chances in the world to be that offensive defenseman in that pair. You know, join the Russ. Join the rush, excuse me, break out the puck, uh, just just play with the offense. He's a fantastic skater, and DJ Smith's going to let him continue to lead the rush and play with that offensive unit when he's on the ice. He's also has the highest percentage when it comes to starting in the offensive zone amongst defensemen at 11%, so that's higher than Chikrin and Thomas Shabbat, and he leads the Ottawa defensemen in terms of expected goals for so far, which is a good sign seeing his offense come to fruition so early in the season. He has three points to start the year, two of those on the power play, so Jake Sanderson, definitely a guy you need to pick up right now if he's still available in your league. All right, the next guy we're going to be talking about, and I think my favorite pickup this week is Archery Lekkonen on the Colorado Avalanche, 35% rostered. He's playing... 20 minutes per game in the first couple of games for Colorado so far this year. Uh, a guy who's playing in a very similar situation to him, playing on the first line of their team is Ivan Barbashev, but he's like 50% or 57% rostered, so he didn't make the cut for this video, but definitely a guy that you could look at picking up in the same kind of sense as Arturi Lekkonen if he is still available. But this second line uh, ha has absolutely been buzzing. His expected goals percentage so far this season is 80 of, on this line, so it's Johansson, um, Arturi Lekkonen, and Valerie Nechuskin. That second line has been absolutely producing in terms of scoring chances. Hasn't really turned into anything actually on the score sheet just yet, but I think that's just been a little bit unlucky. They ran into an insanely hot Mackenzie Blackwood on Saturday night against uh, the San Jose Sharks. But Lekkonen leads the team in expected goals for so far this year. This line's expected goals for per 60 is 7.5. Obviously, that won't last, but it's great to see how efficient they've been so far this season to start. Uh, he's second in the shots. Second in shots on the team and first on his line, Johansson with four, Nuchuskin uh, with five. And he's also first with high danger chances, four. He's creating his own offense, which is great to see, especially on this line. It seems like he's right now being that guy, that offensive guy that uh, this team needs. He's also played the third most minutes, only behind Nate McKinnon and Miko Rantanen in terms of forwards. And he's playing on that first power play with those two guys as well. I love his usage right now. These will eventually turn into points as well, so definitely pick them up before it's way too late in your league. Arturi Lekkonen, my favorite pickup this week. All right, the next guy, 40% rostered, Brian Rust on the Pittsburgh Penguins. I think getting any piece of this second line on Pittsburgh will be important. Riley Smith, another guy you should look at. He's just 57% rostered, won't be as available in as many leagues. But Brian Rust, last season, definitely a down year for him, was his lowest goal per game season since his 2018-2019 season. He had just 20 goals in 81 games played. Injuries have kind of been a cause for concern for him, but last year it wasn't. It just he wasn't producing on that end. Also a really low shooting percentage for his standards as well. 9.5% was his lowest since his 2015-2016 season. So bounce back season for sure for Brian Russ this year. We're already seeing it. You know, he's very outspoken and frustrated about his production last season, and we're seeing he meant it. He has three goals in three games to start the year. He's third in expected goals, four only behind Crosby and Jay Gensel although it certainly doesn't get as much ice time as that first power play the second power play that he's been on he's been the guy in that second power play he leads leads in terms of ice time uh, shots on goal and scoring chances he's tied with Crosby in terms of total ice time as well uh, he's played the third most uh, in terms of all players which is actually quite crazy and then as I mentioned just getting a piece of this line I think will be proved to be very valuable and very important. These two top lines are going to produce a lot of quality scoring chances, and Russ will be a guy benefiting it from it for sure. All right, another one of my favorite pickups this week, Evan Rodriguez, now on the Florida Panthers, 13% rostered. Last year had a criminally low shooting percentage at nine when he was playing with Colorado. He's also already playing two minutes more per game on this first line with Florida than he did last year, averaging about 19 minutes per game this season. Last year was 17 minutes per game. He's quarterbacking that first power play unit uh, as, as the the season starts that could change when obviously Aaron Eckblad and Brandon Montour come back but that won't be until at least December so he's still a valuable pickup till then they play three games this week you know with the opportunity he's leading 
uh, the team in points uh, so far this season. He is, you know, with goals and points, he has four points, two goals in just two games. We've seen how beneficial a guy like Alexander Barkov can be to other fantasy players on his line, and it's proving to be true with Evan Rodriguez this year. He's second in shots, second in individual expected goals for, only behind Matt Kachuk and Sam Reinhart, who are both on a different line. So the scoring is coming from him on that line. I think Carter Verhage due for a little bit of a regression year after scoring 40-plus last season, and Barkov, you know, is always going to be a great like I mentioned, great line mate, great guy to set up. Uh, a guy like Evan Rodriguez who has a fantastic shot. But you've got to think Paul Maurice is liking what he's seeing from Evan Rodriguez, so I don't think we're going to see his ice time dwindle at this point. Definitely pick up Evan Rodriguez if you have the chance. All right, now looking at some deep pickups, uh, guys that are less than 5% rostered heading into this week. The first guy is actually on Minnesota, defenseman, a guy I wouldn't think I'd be picking up this early in the season, but Brock Faber has proven to be uh, very valuable in this Dean Evison's defensive unit so far to start the year. Brodeen and Faber, the top pair right now, best pair available on this Minnesota team. Their expected goals for percentage 57%. That's really high and leads the team right now, which is great to see. He's already been playing big time minutes too. Against Toronto, you know, they lost that game. He played 25 minutes, but he was still a plus three. Um, I thought Kalen Addison would take over when Jared Spurgeon is out uh, for, for a month or so, but it seems like Faber and Brodeen are just getting more of the minutes. Faber's been that replacement guy on that top defensive pair as well. Faber leads defensemen, all defensemen on the Minnesota Wild and expected goals for right now. Definitely has his moments on the rush, has had a couple scoring chances. We saw the same kind of production from him uh, when he was playing in college with Minnesota. Guy just finds a way to put the puck in the back of the net and finds a way to contribute uh, and get points. So just a, it really depends on how his usage drops when Jared Spurgeon comes back. But obviously we've seen great things from him so far, so I don't think it'll drop too much. But until Spurgeon comes back, he's definitely a great pickup to have if you need a defenseman with so many guys out like Ekblad and Montour. All right, so the last guy we're looking at pickup this week, 0% rostered. Again, a guy you can get in deeper leagues, and that's actually Tyler Johnson on the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, so right now it's kind of situational because Tyler Johnson is listed as a center in Yahoo Leagues, but he's clearly playing as a left wing on that second line with Lucas Reichel and Anthanasiu. Um, Reichel is also listed as a left winger in Yahoo Leagues, but has clearly been the second line center. So I wonder if that's going to get rectified or changed. Um, now, look, Tyler Johnson definitely takes some faceoffs, but it, it, Reichel is is the clear number two center. So Yahoo, you got you got to fix that because Tyler Johnson would be proved to be a very valuable add if you could put him in that left wing or right wing spot. He's right now he's second on the team in expected goals for, only behind Connor Bedard. Scored two goals against the Canadians, even though this team doesn't does not have a single power play point just yet. They're still getting a decent amount of power play time, and he's averaging over three minutes per game on the man advantage to start the season, too. So the reason I think I'd want Johnson right now over Lucas Reichel is because Johnson has this dominated five-on-five -five even strength on this team. He's been by far the better player than Lucas Reichel in that situation. He leads the team in high danger chances four with 10. Lucas Reichel doesn't have a single one right now, so not creating a ton of his own offense in that sense right now. Um, Reichel, very power play dependent, has been able, has been one of the guys, you know, on that first power play with Connor Bedard, creating a lot of chances, setting guys up, but nothing has come into it yet. So the fact that Tyler Johnson has been better in five on five is a guy that I'd rather want on my fantasy hockey team as of right now. He also has 17 shot attempts, which is second most on the team, only behind Connor Bedard as well. So at 0% rostered, I definitely give Tyler Johnson a chance. All right, so that's it for Must Add Week 1. Let me know what you thought in the comments of all these guys that I'm telling you to pick up. Let me know if there's any other guys on your waiver wire you're thinking of picking up. Make sure to download the FanDuel Canada app today. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.